There are a number of mature hydrangea shrubs growing in this complex that we're going to look at for botanical features in this video. This one here has blue and white flowers growing on the same plant. The one over here has beautiful different shades of purple flowers. The one behind it, let me just walk around this cherry tree here, has blue and green flower heads. This one over here has blue flowers, fairly uniform, and one of the most common colors for hydrangea. And the one over there is a purple shrub. So, all of these hydrangea shrubs are cultivated varieties, or cultivars for short, of the same one species. Now, in the horticulture business, most people just refer to the hydrangeas as hydrangeas. As if the word hydrangea meant just this one species with all of its different colorful varieties. That works to some degree, but technically speaking, strictly speaking, the word hydrangea refers to a number of species, 60, 70 different species of hydrangea. They all somewhat different, of course related because they are still the same uh, genus. So, and this little distinction here is important because this video is about just one species. All of these colorful varieties belong to just one species, Hydrangea macrophylla. We'll start with the name first because it has a really strange name that does not really have English equivalent. I guess if you translate the Greek word my macrophylla you can end up with big leaf hydrangea but it doesn't get rid of the word hydrangea although some people incorrectly say hydrangea but no there's an ia ending to it it's gia so uh, hydrangea is just a greek word the reason for this being foreign because it's not native to any country that's where English is spoken as a native language. It's spoken as a second, third or whatever language, but not as a native language, especially not so in the past historic context. So, this plant, hydrangeas, as a genus, are native to Japan and China, the Koreas, the Himalayas, and to some degree Southeast Asia. So, that's why scientists, uh, it has names in Japanese, Korean, whatever, but it doesn't have an English name, it's not going to have one. Scientists who catalogued it and described it when it was found and discovered and described for science in the late 1800s, they just named it Hydrangea. Sorry, no English word. So. Just this one species is Hydrangea macrophylla, and macrophylla is a fancy Greek word meaning big leaf. So you could call it big leaf hydrangea, but it doesn't get rid of the word hydrangea. So, and at the leaf is where we start the botanical description. Before we go ahead, I want to mention that from shrub to shrub there will be some differences, even though it's the same species, but due to the being a different color variety and different flower structure, there will be some differences in proportions of leaves and everything. So, let's get started with leafage, because macrophylla, if translated into English, it just means big leaf. So all of these leaves are big. How big? I don't know. Like this big. This one is easy to look at. The leaf is somewhat oval, but fairly round. It ends in a long tip. The leaf margin is very coarsely serrated. The leaf veins are sunk into the surface of the leaf, or set into it, and they are prominent on the underside. There is no hairiness or fuzziness on any of the leaves. The leaves on the stem are in pairs and opposite each other. They also rotate 90 degrees, so these two are oriented one way and the next two are oriented 90 degrees offset and the next two are oriented again 90 degrees offset to make use of or most use of the available sunlight and you can see the next two in the center growing out it's going to be oriented again this way this 90 degree rotation is especially notable at the tips of the shoots further down the star the stem not not so much 
the stem on this particular variety has these purple blotches on it that looks like so some kind of speckling that looks somewhat evenly spread everywhere where the stem this leaf stem this green shoot transitions into a twig a mature twig it becomes woody so there are no purple blotches on it the stem system is fairly weak uh, they break on their heavy loads and heavy flower heads especially when this is soaked with rainwater it gets heavy and it's drooping down so either the twigs or the shoots break at some point here is one that's broken off and it's split off so you have to take good care of the plant the plant is otherwise tends to grow tall and is a, a climbing trailing plant in some other species in the same genus tend to be grow, uh, climbing and trailing plants so it needs a little bit of support tying tying it to the wall with a string or something because it just grows up and then bulges out and pours over and grows everywhere but the twigs need some kind of support I have made a nice uh, cross section on this twig over here and on it you can see that the reason some of the reason for the weakness of it is that it's only partially woody the inside the pith is very soft it's like filled with styrofoam okay so you can see the bark on the outside it's this stem is similar to grapevine if that means anything to you wherever you live so the bark is very thin but the bark peels in long strips and given proper amount of light you can see the proportion of bark and green woody tissue and white it's not styrofoam but really soft spongy stuff on the inside that just fills the stem stem so probably in an emergency situation you could use this I haven't tested as a as a straw for drinking water so that's how the that's how the twigs look like the flower heads have two morphs or two different shapes this one is referred to as a mop head and this one here is a lace cap so this could be a lace cap hydrangea and that could be a mop head hydrangea but again the word hydrangea is still not English like I mentioned before on the lace cap the flowers on the outside open first actually these are decorative flowers they are not fertile actual flowers they just look flowery but botanically these are not flowers these are the actual fertile flowers that will open at the time at this time they are closed and they are I don't know two three millimeters in diameter all of them are closed on the mop head variety it looks like it's in full bloom however these aren't flowers either these are also sepals you can see the actual flowers inside and if I can focus the camera on the center of it in good light you can see that the inside of these is where the actual fertile flowers will open due time what you're looking at is colorful decorative leaves essentially now for these leaves or sepals to explain I'm gonna just contrast it with the standard rose bush over there so if you follow the stem up it you will arrive to some green leaves on the underside of the flower this is a calyx and all of them all of them collectively are the sepals this is green on this and petals are growing next to it so this is how just most the usual flowers look like on this one you'll see there are no there, there are no green leafy structures underneath the stem just continues and branches out so this is a calyx here just a single calyx and they are colorful and the fertile flowers will be opening up from the inside of this okay so I hope that makes sense 
the, the, the botanical details of this plant doesn't take away from the value of its beautiful colors. So let's have the mop heads and let's have the lace caps look like. Now I said there will be some differences with, with leaves, so let's take a look at some of those differences. The leaves on this one, even the biggest ones, are not nearly as big as on the previous shrub that way. It's more oval, elongated, the leaf is still ends in a tip, the edges are still serrated, the leaf stem is maybe a little longer than on the previous one and it's still, does, still in opposite pairs, it still does this 90 degree rotation or, or placement on it but they are spaced further apart from each other on the shoot and if you look at the twig the blotches are different there are blotches here where the leaf stalk meets the stem here there are big purple patches here at every node okay while there are still some unevenly distributed purple patches on the stem so that's how this variety looks like another one over here will help explain how the a hydrangea also grows on this one the leaves are even more rounded uh, the serrations on the leaf margin are huge the the tip the leaf tip is smaller and the leaves are have a somewhat shorter stiffer leaf stalk and as far as patches go on the stem it doesn't really have speckled patches but it is only at the leaf nodes here where the leaf stalk meets the stem okay there are no other purple patches anywhere on it and this one here has here I'll show you how this one grows it, it's very strongly growing up so this one here is the flower head from last year that hasn't been removed and you can see that if you follow it back to about this point here you can see that uh, two buds on left and right sides here grew up and they keep growing in this way and they will elongate and overgrow the height of last year that the plant reached and then from these will terminate become woody throughout the winter and it will grow again the two upper buds the two lateral buds will continue and grow into into shoots so that's how this one grows very aggressively up 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 as it is a trailing climbing plant essentially so not only needs to be supported because of its weak stem but it also kind of needs to be trimmed down 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 if you want to enjoy the flowers at a height where you can reach them that's why nobody reaches those ones and that's why they are still left on the plant from last year here is this one, another beautiful mop head. The flowers start out green on this one. Different proportions to the leaf. More rounded, huge serrations, but long tip. Very, very short stalk to the leaf stalk. And as far as purple patches on the stem, some are at the nodes and some are internodal patches on it. So that's how this mop head looks like. Again, same kind of flower story. These are all sepals and the fertile flowers will be opening in the middle of these. My last story is about the color of flowers. Most of these hydrangeas are blue, but they, and you can see how they change color on the same plant. This one here that has white-ish flowers when they start and they turn into okay creamy white and they turn into this beautiful blue and here is another one this one is starting out as green and then they become this whitish there so the colors are not fixed the colors change with acidity in the soil but it's dependent on available aluminum or aluminium ions in the soil in the first place for hydrangea to change color. It changes color when it gets transplanted from one location or one potting mix to another potting mix. So if you take some 
twigs off this mother plant here or split it and transplant it in a different potting mix, uh, the colors might change. So if there is aluminum in the soil, because hydrangea is a hyper accumulating plant of aluminum, so it absorbs the aluminum from the soil readily. In and flower color and acidity of the soil works the opposite way as litmus paper, if you remember litmus paper from high school chemistry. So on hydrangea, purple is acidic soil if there is aluminum in the soil and in alkaline soil it will become red and pink. So the opposite of the litmus paper colors. So that's how these hydrangeas work in terms of colors. They're really easy to grow and they are winter hardy enough. Here at the Pacific Northwest at the 49th parallel where we are, we had some minus 20 degrees last winter for about two weeks. Hydrangeas are thriving in these conditions in all their cultivated varieties. And normally we get maybe six days of snow here at sea level. Is way more in the mountains. Throughout the year we have about 1200 millimeters of rain. That's about 40, 48 inches of rain, something like that. It's a lot of rain at sea level. So and that's how these hydrangeas look like. That's Those are some of the botanical features I wanted to show with some of the horticultural notes along the way. Thank you very much for watching.